the Douglas County Board of Supervisors to meet to the board meeting to order. Will you all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Will the clerk please call the roll? Pomish. Here. White. Here. Finn. Here. Baker. Here. Payne. Here. Glazeman. Here. Robinson. Here. Jockus. Here. Quam. Here. Finnendale. Here. Lear. Here. Allen. Here. Ryan. Here. Hendrickson. Here. Johnson. Here. Liebert. Here. Anderson. Here. Mock. Here. Conley. Here. Bergman. 19 present, one out. We have a quorum. Claims. <coughs> oh, well, oath, oath of office. We, we're going to um, take have the oath of office of our four students. Um, Sue? Okay, if you'd like to step up here, please. And if you want to raise your right hand and repeat after no. me. I state your oh, we name. Didn't do she told me oh, Do we do them? Have, having been appointed as youth representative, having been appointed as youth representative to the Douglas County Board of Supervisors, to the Douglas County Board of Supervisors, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties. <laughs> discharge the duties. <laughs> to the best of my ability. To the best, best of my ability. ability. Okay, congratulations. And you can go slide. I'm gonna have them. Why don't you all introduce yourself? You got, you got the lights there, they can turn on and um, right there. And just um, introduce yourself and which school you're going to and whatever you want to say. Um, my name is Kara Schmidt. I am a junior at UW-Superior and I'm studying marketing and I'm really excited to serve on the county board. Welcome. Okay. Um, I'm Sarah Garland. I am a senior at Northwestern High School and I'm also excited to be on the county board. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm Casey Schiff. I am also a senior at Northwestern High School, and I hope to go to college next year and pursue a career in animal science, <coughs> so I am happy to be here. Uh, I'm Dustin Suring. Uh, I'm a senior at Northwestern High School, and uh, I'm very glad that I got the opportunity to serve on the county board. Again, welcome, all of you. We really appreciate it. This is the first time in some time we've had a full complement of, of students. And so I really appreciate that. Just one thing, I know what, um, it, what you were told, but it, d during, the, during the discussion, there was any resolutions there, right? some, something that you would like to say, just turn your light on, we all recognize. I might not notice you right away, but just kind of wave too. But if there's something you would like to, you probably want to wait a month or two, but, and then, um, we all have, next month we'll have um, reports from, st from the students, so you can kind of rotate and see who wants to take or do a report. So again, welcome, and we're great to have you all. Um, we haven't done the approval of the minutes. Motion Mr. Pumish, um, who made a second? Uh, Mr. Mock, that we approve the minutes. Discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Claims? Notice a claim from attorney Ryan D. Schertz on behalf of John F. Woland in relation to loss of access to his land. Anything? Uh, that's been sent to our uh, insurance and outside counsel is looking into it. Okay, thank you. Correspondence, we have several correspondence. If you'd like to um, receive and place on file or would like to have copies, um, they are all there. Any, okay, and then um, presentations. Um, towards a stronger Douglas County, University of Wisconsin Extension Program, Transforming Lives and Communities, Sue Denial, the Interim Director of Family and Community Support Educator, and Superior Days Coordinator. Um, welcome, Sue. I think the first time you've been to the I think the first time you've been to the county board meeting. Other than um, the introduction at new colleague. Yeah, and uh, 
and we do, and we welcome you. And again, Sue's really worked really hard, and it's challenging. Superior days again. It's new to her, and and uh, we've got a lot of new staff in the, in the extension. So again, thank you for all you've done, and I'm sure you do a great job. Thank you. Well, transforming lives and communities is part of the extension mission statement, and obviously we work cooperatively with the county. So that's our collaboration effort in making, working together to do that. So in my position, I cover right now two program areas. One is family living. The other is, is very long. It's community, natural resource, and economic development. So I'm doing all of those plus superior days for the next three months as we're doing staff changes. But what are some of the programs we offer? And mostly we just want to come and let you know some of they are. But to give you some visual aids. So I need a volunteer. Joan's not looking at me. <laughs> Someone to hold the bag. Come on up, come on up. You can hold my bag. Because I want to give just some visual reminders to you so that you're like, if you don't remember what I say, <laughs> at least you might remember what I'm holding up. And we do align these with the county priorities and goals. So the first thing is, and I have to leave this um, with Pam today because it came out of their office, <laughs> the Atlas and Platt book for Douglas County. It's the whole county that's involved. And we, whether it's uh, workshops that I've had in, at uh, Northwestern or strategic planning we do with county ride groups, we do serve the whole county and we cover a lot of miles. He, he's like, what else do you have in this? Piggy bank. In family living, one of the things that's in the goals is, is teaching uh, financial capability skills. And this happens to be a bank that we give third graders after we do a kids cash program, teaching savings. We also do financial skills workshops with uh, Head Start parents, with uh, senior citizens. We're working on doing them with the veterans. So there's lots of pieces. Kids cash, money on the bookshelf. I just did a workshop this morning or at lunch for uh, HCE. Ways so that people can get caught up or at least um, not so far behind with their goals. What else is in here? Let's see. The big bucks for economic development. <laughs> While I don't do economic development, I work with people who do. And Superior Days is a good example of that of ways that we can bring different agencies together, um, many of you are part of that, to work for ways, again, to make the communities a more vital place to live. I don't have a whole lot of these. I just don't. This is a Sesame Street program, Little Children, Big Challenges, Incarceration. We do work in the jail. This one is a program for helping children of adults who are incarcerated. Um, I've done workshops. We do workshops under the budgeting. We do parent um, workshops and family services. Um, Lynn in the past, Linda Bruce has worked with the Criminal Justice Committee. So we do a lot with that to make them all better citizens when they come out so they're ready to contribute. This is a Rent Smart certificate. Safe housing, safe neighborhoods is one of the priorities as well. Rent Smart is a curriculum from the extension that's uh, mandatory six hours. And at the end of it, if they go through it all and they have to do homework, which includes budgets, um, credit report applications, there's another thing that they have to do in addition to doing the work. And then when they go, these are usually people that have been evicted in the past. Or um, I did a workshop at CASDA, people who have had police at their previous house. And now what are they going to do? So how do you address that? How, this is, it shows that now I know how to be a good uh, tenant. I know how to keep a clean apartment. I know the legal things to look for when I'm looking at an apartment. All of those kinds of things is a rent smart. And transitional housing makes this a part of the requirement for their transitional housing residents. Ah, a piece of paper that says, to develop the means to encourage safe rental housing and promote positive change in superior neighborhoods. Anyone want to guess what this is from? You might have gotten a survey in the last, or seen surveys about it in the last couple months from the city of Superior? I, I feel like I know what it's from. <laughs> uh, it's 
the rental study task force. Yes, for the city exactly. And one of the things I did was work with them. They wanted a shorter mission statement when they went out to the public that they could present the story. And that's one of the things that I do in, is the strategic planning with nonprofits and government agencies. And this is what we came up for that. We're nearing the end here, folks. Here's an unusual thing. <laughs> Toilet paper roll is correct. Senior citizens and low-income families have a hard, this is something that's not covered by a lot of the federal funds that they receive. And so just helping them find budget ways, doing some sharing with groups, whether it's at the Senior Citizen Center or uh, at the um, Community Services Agency, ways, places around town where they can get that assistance to cover those diapers for babies, things like that. And then the other thing is meds. For senior citizens, this is a big issue. Where, do we just, where can we just find some pieces? It's part of the family living um, financial capability. And the very last thing is the bag. At, oh, wait. There's, this is to serve for the veterans <laughs> that we're working on. We are working on, hopefully this spring or maybe next fall, get um, uh, kind of end of life planning, but not end of life, but uh, retirement planning, those kinds of things, which Rent Smart is part of, working with our ag person, how to transfer the family farm, how to make arrangements. We'll also have some budgeting classes, some Rent Smart kinds of things for veterans. So there's that. And the last thing is the bag itself. Superior Days is a big part of what we do in the office in this position um, under community development, and we are in full swing. And remind you that uh, registrations are now online and you can pay online if you're interested in signing up soon. And that's it thank in you, a thank nutshell. You. Thank <laughs> you. Any, um, <laughs> any questions for Sue? Again, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> ordinances. Amendment to ordinance number 8.0, zoning ordinance, presenting by, presented by the zoning committee. Motion by Ms. Bergman, yes. seconded by Mr. Robinson, that ordinance um, 8.0 be amended. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Ordinance change carries. Resolutions. Resolution number 7714, resolution by the Land and Development Committee, subject land sales. Motion Mr. Allen, Mr. Jarkus, that resolution 7714 be adopted. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 7814, resolution by the Land and Development Committee, subject easement to Pogos Harbor Inn authorized. Motion by Mr. Allen, seconded by Mr. White, that resolution 7814 be adopted. Discussion, Ms. Hendrickson. I'm just curious how they got permits to do this. It seems like a difficult. Mr. Allen. Well, they had, it, it is a dock that it's on the flowage down there that was backed up and it was on the, it was already there. They had, the pilings were already driven. They actually just replaced the roof on the structure and with that that's when they needed that activated the zoning thing and the permits and the dnr and all that stuff so it's been there for years thank you yep and oh mr Conley. yeah if i could just say one uh, other thing on that we had referred it to zoning to see if they had any issues with it they did not and also the dnr has also signed off on it thank you mr payne uh, i'm just curious this the payment he has to make is that a new payment has he been paying that in the past it's just our standard. It's our standard fee for easements. Oh, okay. So it's, now he starts paying it. Now he gets it's just, yeah, just a one-time fee for administrative costs. So. Any other discussion on resolution 7814? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> resolution carries. Resolution number 7914, resolution by the Land and Development Committee, subject, easements to Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway authorized. Mr. Allen, Ms. Hendrickson, 
A resolution 7914 be adopted. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 8014, resolution by the Forest, Parks, and Recreation Committee. Subject, pipeline right-of-way and easement to Enbridge Energy, Sandpiper and Line 3 replacement projects authorized. Motion, Mr. Liebert. Second. Seconded by Ms. Bergman. A resolution 8014 80, um, be adopted. Discussion? Ms. Hendrickson. I'm just... Just curious um, why the land goes to the forestry committee. Nothing personal, but why, you know, why it doesn't go to the general fund or? Mr. Liebert. <laughs> um, we had a, uh, a motion made and a, we changed it probably a few years back that that money would go to us for future land acquisition pro projects. It was land being removed from our forest crop land and part of our statutory authority or responsibility is, is that we give up easements, we are supposed to replace that. So it goes into that fund. Thank you. Mr. Allen? Um, yeah, Mark, I guess uh, this is something when I was on the forestry committee that, that I established, helped establish the fund because mm -hmm. I was afraid of that. But over the past few meetings and years, we've been, I've been seeing more and more of land acquisition. It's not about the resolution, Mr. Chairman. But it has to do with the designation of the money, actually. Um, it's been going on more and more in, in this fund. I thought, it, for one thing, it was capped at $1,000 a year. This will exceed that cap, and I could be wrong. The second thing is that I, at some point in time, would like to see our finance department or somebody uh, to see how much money, if it's better for us to leave it on the tax bases, on, on the tax rolls, or put it in forest crop. Because at a certain point, I've heard for years that the towns don't feel they get their fair share on the, on the uh, tax, the timber revenue. The argument has been that, that the taxes on the land and I'm not sure because I've never seen a study done and eventually I'd like to see something like that. But I do, I am questioning the money in that account and I think it was capped at $150,000 a year and I'm not sure if this exceeds that. Um, I think the cap was actually higher than that if I remember. Um, I don't remember if we had a limit on how much money we could um, put into that account. I think it might have been, we had a, a $300,000 I think that was in there at one time. So I know this doesn't exceed that. That account is pretty low right now. Um, and if you remember on your other point, I guess, um, we used to put $20,000 tax uh, or money out of our budget into that account. Uh, when land got so expensive, $20,000 wouldn't buy us five acres sometimes. So um, we have now quit putting $20,000 in there and we are relying on this type of uh, um, money coming in there so that we can do future acquisitions. One of the big things that we did, if you remember, the last time we spent a lot of money on was the uh, acquisition of about, oh, I think it was several or a thousand acres um, to replace uh, blown down uh, red pine timber. That came out of this fund. The easements for our trails that were taken up by lime timber when they purchased that property and we lost that came out of this fund. So I think the fund is uh, well serving of the county's interests and uh, I, I would not uh, at this time I guess um, um, be afraid of an argument uh, for what we've done with that money in the past. Um, the as far as the towns, when the town of Superior was a little concerned with us taking that um, Namaji watershed project um, out there where we got, I forget how many thousands of acres that was, the forestry did an analysis of what they got for tax money off of that uh, versus what they would gain if they were put into our 10% um, our share revenue share. And the town of Superior actually gained money by us acquiring that property and enrolling it into the forest crop. So um, you have to be kind of, um, take a little more in-depth look than we're just removing a part of it from the tax rules. And um, I think it serves well that um, the county forest was uh, put up for images right away on this. And I think that it was good that Enbridge uh, paid the amount of money that uh, the county has set up for uh, that kind of an easement. So I think it's a win-win situation for us. Thank you. I know, I know Keith and Mark both, we've talked about and then we're gonna we, we need at least get information and have a discussion probably the executive committee or um, just for at least for information purpose purpose what's going on 
Um, any other comments on Resolution 8014? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 8114, resolution by the administration committee, subject utility tax sharing. Mr. Mr. Baker, Mr. Quam, the resolution 8114 be adopted. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? I had a question. I had a question on this one too. Uh, this is one that's come up at the Towns Association. And uh, I'm just wondering if it, it's something that we want to communicate with them about before we send this one to Madison or wherever it's going to go. Yeah, that's always an issue, but you know, what do we do? You know, I'm not sure we do with it. Well, we can. I don't know what where to refer to, but we can have some discussion. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. sure. Okay. The, the resolution passed already, right? Yeah. The resolution carries. Okay. Um, resolution number eighty-two fourteen. Resolution by the Forest Parks and Recreation Committee. Subject: Upper Saint Croix Watershed Protection Project Property Acquisition with Trust for Public Land Phase Two. Motion by Mr. Pomish, seconded by Mr. Liebert. The 8114 be adopted. I mean, 8214 be adopted. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 8314, resolution by the Forest Parks and Recreation Committee. Subject Upper St. Croix River Watershed Pro Protection Project Phase 2. Mr. Liebert. Mr. Robinson, uh, Resolution 8314 be adopted. Discussion, Mr. Allen. Can somebody explain to me what that fiscal note means? Is that a grant that's going through? Is that the $3,000, Keith? The $200,000. That's a, um, the money that's going to be applied for by the uh, stewardship grant. That'll be the money that there will be actually the only impact to this to the county other than we will acquire this pro property, which has uh, about 10 acres of pretty good red pine on it. Um, it also has some very good access that we'll need later on to that piece of property, but that's another story. But um, the $200,000 that's coming from the state uh, has no cost to us. We have about a $3,000 um, fiscal impact on there. We actually think it'll be near to $1,000 that we'll have to actually spend to do the processing of the grant. That was the first resolution, right? Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor of the resolution? Um, 8214, <coughs> signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The resolution carries. Resolution number 8414, resolution by the administration committee, subject budgetary transfers. Motion, to approve. motion by Mr. Baker, Mr. Pomish, that resolution 8314 be approved. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify. Oh, what? I had to roll call Doug. Oh, okay. District 3, Finn. Yes. Baker? Yes. Payne? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Jockus? Yes. Quam? Yes. Finnendale? Yes. Lear? Yes. Allen? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Liebert? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Mock? Yes. Conley? Yes. Bergman? Yes. Pomish? Yes. White? Yes. Mm. 19 yes, 0 no, 1 absent. The resolution carries. Okay, that's all the resolutions. Um, County Ministries report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as Sue indicated, Superior Days uh, will take place February 24th and 25th, and we encourage people to participate. I've been on the uh, Issues Committee, and so far we're narrowing down the, the issues, but the issues that seem to rise to the top are a couple that we're familiar with already and impact the county. One would be the half percent uh, local option sales tax for county highway projects. And another um, uh, issue that Keith Kessler has uh, done the write-up in the background on is funding for 911. We believe that those will continue to be important issues that will bring down, in addition, um, issues of uh, supporting education of the university and then also some issues in regards to uh, 
mental health uh, service funding. Um, and the process continues. I believe the next meeting will be in December for the um, issues committee. We, we're having good participation from Ashland County and also Bayfield County. Uh, this year, uh, Iron County, although they haven't brought any issues forward, discussions with them, they want to be part of the process. They support Superior Days, uh, and I think financially they've um, continued to contribute to it. So I think we have a solid um, tier of counties uh, going down with us, but we do need to spread the word for people to join the effort, um, especially uh, business uh, uh, businesses in the area that could benefit uh, from some of the issues that we're bringing down. Uh, performance management. Um, we, we, we did some training last week on performance management. Uh, we do have our web-based system up and ready to go. We're working out some of the tweaks. Um, we were able to get that system up uh, within a six-week period. Initially, they said it usually takes 16. But with the feedback that we've received um, from staff and department managers, uh, what I would like to do is extend the time period within which staff can do their performance evaluations. Uh, I believe they need some additional uh, training and instruction, and we don't want to rush the process just to get to a, uh, because of a December 15th timeline. We want to make the most out of uh, this evaluation process. And um, so we're, we're looking at extending the deadline, and I'll be discussing this with the admin committee uh, on December 4th, uh, ad admin committee meeting. Uh, in regard to housing and economic development, I know that's been a priority uh, for the county. Uh, Doug, uh, Chairman Finn and I met with a group of rural residents to discuss um, housing opportunities um, uh, on the Highway 53 corridor. Uh, we're also working with the Housing Development Corporation, which has uh, commissioned a preliminary feasibility study regarding housing needs in the county, trying to look at some of the lower hanging fruit, um, how we can encourage housing. Um, especially in the rural areas. And I'll be getting updates on, on that. Um, also today I met with uh, Exodus Management. As you remember, several years ago, the county's ability to provide 10 acres of land uh, that was part of the fairgrounds parking lot on Tower Avenue, um, that, enabled, um, that enabled Exodus to get the financing they needed to do their uh, phase two expansion. Absent of that, they would have been locating in a um, Owatonna, Minnesota. I met with the, um, the president of the company today to discuss uh, their intent for that land and whether or not uh, we could be released uh, sort of from that collateral position. At this point, no, uh, we'll continue on. I believe it'll run until 2018 uh, where they'll uh, have that land as collateral and available for development uh, if they need that land for their phase three development. But um, Exodus uh, doing well. They employ over 90 people. Uh, they have an alliance with Caterpillar uh, to manufacture uh, these um, uh, material of moving um, machines. It's a pretty impressive um, operation. Um, open enrollment this year, the uh, county for, for 2015 is offering a high deductible health plan HSA option. Uh, we're right in the middle of the open enrollment process right now, so we're monitoring that to see how many employees decide to go with the high deductible plan. Uh, onto the highway department. L last week we experienced our first uh, snowfall of the year, which was about a month earlier than last year. Um, and we received, and several of you did, receive some complaints um, about the performance during that snow event. And we're taking those complaints seriously. I've been working with Jason. Um, I've been informing him when I've, I've heard of complaints. Uh, Jason is meeting with his staff uh, to discuss how we can improve those services. He's doing an analysis of what we can do better so when the next snow event occurs uh, that we don't repeat uh, any mistakes that we made in this last event. So I appreciate all of you for sharing the comments that you received um, from citizens out there in regards to the roads and um, we're going to do better. Um, also tonight I'm going to ask for you to confirm my appointment of Jason Jackman as Highway Commissioner. Jason has been with the county since 2010. He served as Highway Technician Road Supervisor. Um, and since April 22nd, uh, he served as Interim Highway Commissioner. At the last Transportation Infrastructure Committee, uh, the members there um, voted to support uh, that appointment. So I hope that you will confirm that appointment at the end of my, uh, at the end of my report. 
Um, thank you for those of you that extended the, uh, attended the University of Wisconsin um, extension um, visioning session that we had last week in room 270. I thought that was a really good event, mm -hmm. and it allowed us to express where we think the needs are in Douglas County and how extension can help fit those needs. That information will be used as extension uh, goes forward, keeping the committee informed of how they're going to fill the two vacant, currently vacant positions, and also the va position that'll become uh, vacant when uh, when uh, Joan uh, retires. Um, our Veteran Service Office, and I think it's kind of appropriate during the month of uh, uh, Veterans Day, was recognized twice um, uh, for its service. Um, one was a, a recognition, and this doesn't do it justice, but it was a certificate of recognition that Trevor received by Governor Scott Walker and Secretary John Skokos. Um, and jo uh, Secretary Skokos is the uh, Secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, uh, and I had a call from Secretary Skokos uh, yesterday, and he basically uh, called me and just basically wanted to compliment Douglas County for its vet service office or, and office. Um, he sees us as a shining star of VSOs. Um, our staff, Trevor and, and Ellen, has a shining stars for Wisconsin. So I wanted to share that with you. We oftentimes we don't get um, secretaries uh, calling us and, and complimenting us on the work that our staff uh, do. Also, Ellen received a recognition, uh, a certificate of appreciation from a, a, a group of local veterans groups, from American Legion Post 435, from TRIA, which I believe stands for the Re Retired Enlisted Association, and from v VFW Post 1090 for her exceptional work. Um, again, I think that was appropriate, and it's really nice to get when staff receives recognition like that. Uh, in regards to some miscellaneous stuff, I wanted to give you an update on the um, Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa's uh, application for designation as a Class I uh, area under the United States Clean, Clean Air Act. Um, we had until November 10th to submit comments, and I did submit comments on behalf of the county, uh, but basically more questions about trying to better understand what the impact of, of that designation would be on us and asking for continued dialogue and uh, conversation as the band proceeds with with the uh, designation. Um, the band responded um, to my letter saying that they're getting a lot of comments and it'll take some time for, for the band to go through all these comments and provide responses to it. But um, when we went to the uh, when we went to the meeting uh, over at the Black Bear Casino, it was a I thought a very constructive dialogue. Um, Chair Chairwoman Diver was there. And she's engaged in this process, um, but it, I thought it was a very, uh, a very good dialogue. And, and they've stated that their intent is not to hamper the economic development opportunities for the region. Our concern is what message does it send to the um, to the economic development community. So we're, we're, we'll keep you posted on how when this moves forward. And um, finally, I'd just like to say for those of you who are familiar with the club, I did meet with the Wascott Men's Garden Club. Uh, on October 24th, and it was a very enjoyable conversation. Uh, I think the fact that our highway department did such a great job on County Trunk Highway T, um, uh, it was it was fun to go there with, with that project having been completed, uh, that first phase. And also it was a great opportunity for me to share with them the priorities that you've laid out for the county and, and continue that dialogue. Uh, and, and finally, um, for those of you who don't know, the uh, famous Douglas County USO show has returned uh, to uh, Superior December 6th and 7th at 7 p.m. And is that at the Historical Society? It is. On John Avenue, on John Avenue starring our own Jim Payne. <laughs> um, so we encourage all of you to attend. Um, I've heard great reviews uh, from past shows, so um, I think it'll be great. And then finally, just happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Any any questions for Andy, the administrator? Um, before we ha we have to, we need a motion later on. Okay, Kay Johnson. Uh, I was going to make the motion. Okay, I'll second it. Kay Johnson made the motion. Nick Baker made the second. That um, Jason Jackman be appointed um, Douglas County Highway Commissioner. I believe also this had the support of the um, Transportation Committee. 
Yes. And nope. um, um, questions on the motion, Mr. Payne? Questions on the motion before we, I think we still got some administration things to do yet. Uh, answer, Andy have, might have some questions you got to answer. Um, anything else? All those in favor of the appointment signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Jake and Jason. You want to say a few words? Well, first of all, I'd like to say thanks to Andy for his support and your support as well. But I also would like to take the opportunity to um, thank you for um, the bonding money for 2015 and making uh, highway repairs a priority. And I also want to extend an uh, open um, invitation to contact me anytime that you have questions or concerns. Thanks. Again, welcome. Uh, well, I shouldn't say welcome. You've been here a while, but the new congratulations, new um, position, and I'm sure you'll do a great job. Um, any questions for Jason? Anything? Okay. Um, all those in favor of the, did we vote yet? Okay, we did. Okay. All right, we voted. All right. Um, now questions for Andy. Any questions on his report? Yes, Mr. Payne. Uh, first, thank you for the plug. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Um, and that's Pearl Harbor Day, if people don't remember. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask if you wouldn't mind forwarding the letter you sent to the Fond du Lac Band uh, to us. You emailed it us sure. or, or something. Yeah, I'd just like to see that letter. Uh, and finally, the 911 funding for Superior Days. Uh, where is that in the legislative process? I was under the impression that that was well underway even last year, wasn't it? Mr. May Mr. I ask Mr. Keith to uh, address Kessler. that? He's the he's a resident expert. <laughs> well, actually, what happened is last year it developed a life of its own after we kicked the cat a couple of times. <laughs> And it made it much farther than we had actually anticipated it to make. It, it made it to a joint hearing. But the problem, or it made it to a joint hearing between the House and the Senate, and it was supported 9 to 1 when you count the votes. What happened is the legislature just simply ran out of time, and it never got on the floor. Thus, it was a dead issue. So we have to kick the cat again. So it's going to pass? We're going to win this one? <laughs> we, have been, we have been fighting this battle for nine years. Uh, Wisconsin, I believe, is one of two states in the country that does not have the proper legislation to fund 911 systems. We have to keep kidding the, kicking the cat until it stops squealing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess my question is the same as the first. Do you know what are the odds of us getting on the calendar this year, the legislative calendar? It's my understanding that this is being looked at relatively favorable by the governor. We have been providing information to various, uh, to my, some of my various counterparts around the state who have been inviting their senators and representatives into their communication centers to promote this. I believe that it would have passed last year had it not been introduced so late in the session. Uh, the negative, I don't know who is going to introduce it this year. Senator Labram introduced it last year, but he has uh, since chosen not to run for a state office. Uh, all I can tell you is I believe there's going to be str some strong support, but I can't tell you who that is. And if it doesn't come from the legislature, I th think there's a pretty good possibility that the governor may, governor may include it in his budget bill. Well, leave the cat alone, but go ahead and kick those legislators then. <laughs> yeah, I got two cats, and I don't want to, like kicking them either. <coughs> Mr. White. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Andy, uh, when you spoke to Ex Exodus, did you get a feel or did any indication that they were going to go through with their third phase on the 10 acres out here, or they didn't? Did they... Right now they're looking at whether or not they have enough space at their existing facility to do the expansion. Um, and if that were the case, then they wouldn't. They would probably just release that um, that option uh, that they have on that land come 2000. And I believe 2018 when their loan um, when their loan is paid with uh, MVAC seven. Other questions from, um, to Andy regarding his report. Anything else, Mr. Robinson? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, regarding a veteran service officer, I've been getting an awful lot of favorable comments from veterans that have gone in there for uh, help. And uh, so I still want to 
make sure that every, he hears that, that uh, the comments that I'm getting are very favorable. Uh, number two on the uh, uh, United States Clean Air Act. Oh, is that the Air Act? I was, well, I thought it was like Clear Water Act. <laughs> but, well, okay, I was under the, I, I've been getting a lot of correspondence from WCFA regarding the, the uh, Clean Water Act. And I've got, I've been saving an awful lot of, I could pass it on to you. I know uh, John Harris has been getting it. And uh, this is a nationwide issue. And uh, so uh, it's got a long ways to go yet. And that would not be a bad item to put on forestry regarding the Water Act, the, the yeah. changes. Because I know there's concern from other counties regarding that, and there might be a good topic to have some discussion at forestry. Yeah, it's, it's a huge issue. Yeah, it is. Any other question for the administrator, Mr. Liebert? Um, yeah, Andy, I think um, we have to do Terry White. Or not. Okay. I just, I didn't want you to forget him before you were done. We, we're doing another appointment. Okay. So we're not, not at that point yet. Not at that point yet. Okay, no. sorry. Don't get me all confused here. <laughs> Mr. Allen. I just see t uh, Andy's going on vacation next week, and I want to wish you good luck hunting. <laughs> if I get out there, thank you. <laughs> Okay, if there's no other questions for our administrator, county board chairman's report, and then we'll do appointments. Um, I want to recognize, as you probably all would, um, know, that jo Jack O'Brien resigned as a county board member after almost 25 years of service. And um, I asked him if he wanted to be here tonight, but um, he, he, he'd, he'd prefer not to be. But um, Jack was a very dedicated county board member. One thing about Jack over the years, if I needed to make some changes, do some things, he's always open to that. So we're going to miss Jack and appreciate his many years of service. So we'll be mailing him a letter. I'm just thanking him for his services from April of 1990 to November of 2014. So it's almost 25 years. So we want to thank Jack for all he's done for the county and his dedication. Worked for the city for many, many years and, and um, appreciate his services. So. County board um, report. Well, Andy covered most of um, what I was going to cover. Superior days. Um, if you're going to go to Superior days, please fill out that form and also make reservations. Um, or you know, so, well, it's in February, so it's moving quickly. So if you plan on going, please let me know so I have an idea how many people are going and carpool as much as we can. Um, and Andy, uh, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, we need, um, quite honest, we need more involvement, in this, and especially from the business community on some of this. So, but I want to also commend those county board members. Quite a few that have attended. We probably have a, a great representation from the county board at, at our meeting so far this year. I want to thank them for that. Um, just a real quick note: as you all know, we did not fund the development association for 2015. There was a in Business North, there was an article, I think Keith sent, I put some copies on some desks, and I think Keith's email sent a, a, a copy of the, um, of the Northern, yeah, on the link. So you can look at that. Um, although we're in, we did not approve funding, that does not mean we're not committed to economic development and move forward. And um, so we're just um, looking at other things. That's all I can say. Um, just a reminder, I got an email today, the um, City County Christmas Club, Club Christmas Party is um, on December 5th on the Friday in Keith, Keith Allen's district at the Belgian Club. So that is on the 5th. Um, and I believe, that, okay, the other thing I want to mention too, and it'll be uh, sort of reports, Patty Cosgrove resigned from the Extension Committee. And Patty served a long time. Um, thank her for her service. But so and it's, that's a citizen representative. So if you know someone, and we have, we have now said that visioning group, if you know someone who would like to serve on the extension committee, um, please um, have them send me a letter. So we'd like to get that filled. We need to make sure we have quorums. And so we'd like to get that filled as soon as we can. So if you know someone, just encourage them to send a letter. Um, and that's all I have. Um, appointments um, to the um, 
it back board, um, Taylor Peterson, Hi um, Traffic Highway Traffic Safety Committee, um, um, John Keel from the Superior Police Department, to replace Sergeant Mark McGillis, and then Andy, you have um, Terry White uh, appointed to the Lake Superior National Estrian Research Reserve. And congratulations, congratulations, Terry. That's a real good, important appointment. So, is there a motion to approve the appointments? Uh, yes. Oh. Aging and Disability Resources. Oh, we did get that one. Yes. Okay. Kathy Liz Dahl to replace Michelle Hughes. It's on your uh, Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. That was a somewhere new one. On oh, the agenda, okay. Okay. The I've been, okay. Motion to approve them. You could, do you all hear that? Do you want to get that again? Did so you that, hear that appointment or? Um, to the Aging and Disability Resource Center. Sorry. Kathy Liz Dahl to replace yeah. Michelle Hughes as Douglas County appointee. Yeah. yeah. And I was waiting for that. And I didn't know, I didn't realize it had come. Okay. It was, we just got today, I think. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, so there's a motion second to approve the appointments. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, committee reports. Who would like to have committee reports? Mr. Allen. Kind of follow up what uh, Chairman Finn said uh, with the other uh, division of the Development Association. I received a letter. I think I emailed it to you. If not, it's in your packet. It's the last couple of pages. Whereas the uh, Superior Business Center Board decided not to uh, run the Superior Business Center after December 31st, I believe. Uh, the city and county has met a few times. I was not able to attend the committee meetings. Uh, Doug, I, I'd like you to talk a little bit about it. I think the time frame has moved a little bit. And then, uh, in, is it... Somebody is going to manage it for us yeah, temporarily. I, I, I don't know if I don't know if that is. I believe it could. We can we can announce it. I you know. But the city, so the city's been more involved in this county. But we had right. neutral thing, and of course, the, basically there is the funding would come out of the revenue from the Superior Business <coughs> Center. Um, but um, and then long term, we we are we I want to we want to look, and I repeat, only look, look at options whether or not um, the the EDA grant. It's almost 20 years old. Whether and we have, may have some options. If you want to, to sell the building, we could. Um, if EDA approves it, and that money would go to economic development. So could go to another building as far as that goes. But but um, so we're gonna we want to look at that the next year or so. And uh, again, we're gonna have a new manager that's gonna take over, I believe, around the first of December. Also, we might have another option to, to get another management group. Yeah, and there again, too. I think well, we got to look a lot of things. Options, right yeah. now, we were, and again, the, we received a letter from the the Development Association say that no longer to, to manage the October the 29th. Yeah, was dated. We received that, and so um, we met last no. week and told them what our intention was as far as, um, or this week I should say, what we plan on doing. So that would be an Doug. issue that. We, but again. The one thing we want to stress too is the far it was the 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 the, the business in the center, the one that leasing space, then everything basically stays the change. We'll say we'll, we'll work with them, and or the manager will work with them, and the manager has had experience in the past. So, okay, thanks, sir. Okay. Um, committee reports, um, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to be sure that everybody is very courteous to these snowplow drivers that are out there. We had quite a snowstorm and the temperature dropped very quickly, it made it very hard for the crew. Um, things are clearing up really good. I went on a lot of the roads today and uh, just remember to be very courteous and give them a thank you when you can, it helps. Thank you. Committee reports, Mr. Jockus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At our last administration committee, we reviewed the compensation plan reclassification process. You may remember back uh, last spring uh, or earlier in the year when we were coming to that end of that compensation plan implementation, a uh, few of the employees were not happy and we, had to, we promised that we would at least look back at this reclassification process and we did do that. So it is in the um, uh, minutes, so if you go back to your iPads and look at it, it's real succinct and, and clarifies a lot for everybody. So. We did do that. And then if I could just steal the thunder a little bit from Sue here, I had the opportunity to attend the extension education recycling meeting today to make quorum. And I tell you, it's, it's a nice thing because I kind of stepped out of my little boundary and I don't get to see that kind of stuff mm -hmm. firsthand. So it does work real nice when you get to go around and change around committees and stuff. But one of the things that was really fascinating that I learned from Mary Clune is our recycling coordinator. There's about 10,000 mattresses that go to the recycling or go to the landfill each 
uh, th this last year. And out of that 10,000, 800, 800 of them were only able to get recycled. Well, I always go to the, when you go to the dump or you go to these waste uh, places, it always charges, they always have a sign that says they charge more for uh, wet mattresses. I'm one of the city guys that thinks, what the heck, why would they charge more for a wet mattress? I just thought they all got landfilled. The reason that wet mattress charges is because they actually get landfilled, and those mattresses do take up a lot of space in the landfill. But out of those 10,000, 800 of them were dry and able to be recycled. They go over to Goodwill in Duluth, and they get pulled apart and made into different materials and things like that. So I'm just here to tell everybody to keep your mattresses dry until you get them to the recycling yard. <laughs> Thank you. Wrap them in plastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keith. Um, Thank you for doing that. I had something else going on this morning, so thank you for covering the uh, extension. So. Thank you. And again, that really gives an example. Again, we need to fill that position. So we, we have forms. Ms. Henderson. And I want to thank all the folks that showed up for visioning. Um, as chair of the extension committee, it can't happen fast enough to get those uh, people hired. So things are moving forward. We appreciate all the cooperation. And uh, <coughs> besides the staff leaving and then Patty's sick, so... Thank you, Alan, for helping out. And Doug, I know you would have if you'd have been around. So everything is fine there. It's just uh, just a process, and uh, it's going to take some time. Probably by next spring, we'll be up and running again. But we'll uh, carry on. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Liebert. Thank you. Uh, forestry two weeks ago had a, a sale, timber sale. It was the largest dollar and the highest dollar amount per cord ever in our history. I think it was 2.2 million, I think it was, which is quite a bit of money. Um, the, the, that's kind of a scary thing that it was so good because when it gets so good, then it's going to go bad soon, probably. <laughs> but it was the highest sale ever and the highest paid um, um, price per cord. Uh, we were hoping for a uh, late winter rather than an early winter. So the early winter caused enough snow in the woods now that the they can't freeze things down like they do, so there's a lot of delays on that, and it isn't good for the loggers. But uh, like I said, the, the optimism at the loggers uh, paid off for the county on those bidding prices. Thank you. Other committee reports? Mr. Robinson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, October 20 and 21 and 22, I attended the uh, Upper Midwest Invasion Species Con Conference over in Duluth. Uh, this was a very well organized conference. It was Monday, Tuesday, and a ha half a day on Wednesday. Uh, everything went according to clockwork. The presenters were allotted so much time, and that's what they uh, what they uh, were given, and that's what was that's what they got. Uh, the issues that they pre presented uh, were anywhere from well, I went on a. Uh, uh, Tour of uh, a bus tour of uh, uh, going to cloquet and 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 uh, should they were showing us about their cloquet for, forest over there and uh, the Fond du Lac tribal tribal uh, resource center we were at that and that was a very interesting uh, deal that was on Monday afternoon and then on uh, Tuesday we was all just regular workshops and sessions. And uh, it was very much on time. A lot of the topics that were covered were basically uh, identifying invasive species. And of course, emerald ash borer was a big issue. Uh, so if anybody has any questions as to what was uh, covered, I'll be more than happy to tell them. I'm going to pass this information on to uh, John Harris. Thank you. Any other committee reports? Mr. Quam. Uh, the Health and Human Services uh, met uh, last week, and uh, we had a presentation by the Sheriff's Department. I don't want to mention the officer's name, but he did a very good job. The Chairman, Doug Finn, and the Administrator, Andy Lisak, were in attendance, and it was a presentation about 45 minutes on the narcotics that are in the area, from meth to heroin to any other type that they can reach, whether they're uh, street drugs or uh, registered pharmacist uh, pills. Uh, he explained and he showed us about $50,000 worth of uh, narcotics that have been just
picked up in the area in city and the county, and uh, it was quite an interesting program. So I want to give kudos to the sheriff's department for allowing him to present that to the Health and Human Services Board. Uh, any comments on that? Uh, that was very informative. I was glad I went. I said that was very, very informative. Something that we all need to hear. And then uh, Trevor gave a report and showed that he's well within budget and that he was appreciative to all the uh, different uh, members of the county community for participating in runs and so forth and the monies he has raised for the various uh, veterans and sailors and so forth uh, programs. And uh, also the county uh, health and human service board are under budget yet. Uh, but we do have some patients in that downstate, which are costing us uh, $900 a day in the state institution, and about seven, between five and 700 a day for those that are in a, a different uh, institution. So, just to let the uh, members know that uh, costs are going up right now because of the commitments to the institutions. Thank you. Well, thank you. Any other committee reports? Just one positive thing I think about when, when Mark mentions the um, timber sales, and, and, and you know you think of all the value of the timber. I just want to mention, I talked to, oh, I, I used to go around and check on things a little bit. Talked to Andrew said a week or two ago, for the first 10 months of the year, January through October, um, uh, the half a percent sales tax, we're up about 17% for the first 10 months which I would not be surprised is one of the highest in the state. I would not be surprised. We were up, last year we were up about, for the whole year, about 10% above the year before. it. So I think that's encouraging for the economy of the area and what's going on, and, and so I think that's amazing. Um, before we, um, would this, any of the students on their, um, we'll have, next month we'll have you, uh, have student reports, but anything about what's going on in your, at, your, at your school, Ms. Schmidt? Yeah, um, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the announcement that they did decide to outsource uh, the custodial staff at UW-Superior. We just got the announcement uh, yesterday. Um, other stuff that's going on is um, at least student government is gearing up, getting ready to um, figure out our stuff for Superior Days, so we're excited about that. Um, and. Sorry, a little, a little on the spot today. Um, but other stuff that we have going on, um, we're continuing trying to figure out how to plug up a lot of the holes that UWS is looking at with some of the deficit issues that we've had with our budget. Uh, the tuition freeze has hit us really hard. Um, and I know a lot of students are hoping to lobby on behalf of UW system and, and really push for more funding for all of the um, university institutions, of course, you know, WITC and uh, UW Superior and education in general, so. Thank you. Now, we need that issue. I mean, we really need an issue for, regarding UWS, WITC, so we need that. Um, all the three students we have this right now are from Northwestern. Would everybody want to give anything, mention anything going on at your school, or you don't have to. We can do it next month. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, well, nothing really has been happening at Northwestern, but on Monday, <laughs> um, on Monday we had a couple of veterans come in. We had a, like an all school assembly, and we had a couple of veterans in honor of Veterans Day come in, and like they talked about what they went through and like what they like what they did during the Vietnam War, and I don't know, just kind of like enlightened us about just like being in the army and the military and everything and their experiences. That's really it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Um, approval of the bills. Oh, Ms. Ryan. I was just gonna say that Northwestern did have something happen. I heard that one of their teachers was uh, selected to go into the 4-H Hall of Fame. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Miss <laughs> um, Ryan, did you have something else? You mentioned to me something else you wanted to report on. What was it? You mentioned. Well, we were talking about the football team. Yeah, but there was, I thought there was something else too. I don't know. We have a new restaurant in town. I'd like everybody <laughs> to welcome. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we don't get no, no free advertisement. 
Okay, um, approval of the bills, we did that. Um, future agenda items, um, adjournment. So motion by Mr. Allen, Mr. Pomish that we stand adjourned. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm missing something. I think I'm missing something. Did I miss something?